Well, we speak uh, more about this with Kasaji's Deputy Parliamentary Coordinator, Tony Arunreich. A very good evening to you, and thank you so much for speaking to us, uh, Tony. I just want to pick up where uh, Matthew Parker was speaking saying there that this has been a discussion ongoing for uh, something like the past three decades. And I'm just wondering for an industry that is considered not only the lifeblood of public transport in South Africa, I think at some point it was said to be 60, accounted for 65 percent of the industry. What seems to be the problem to bringing that conversation to its national conclusion, as Matthew says? Is it uh, agreeing on the defining features of the industry and uh, what level of formalization regulation is required? Good evening and thank you very much for having us on the show. Our view is that we have to formalize the industry. We've got to make sure that there's compliance with labor law. We've got to make sure that people pay tax in this industry as all other businesses. And then we've got to make sure that all the conditions of employment of workers exist, but also that the taxi industry can operate effectively with clear rules and guidelines from both national, provincial and local government. What we've seen with the strike over the last few days, which led to huge loss of income of many, many workers, industry and the economy has taken a knock. And this is clearly a sad indictment for the way that the politicians have dealt with this matter in the city of Cape Town and the way that the taxi industry themselves has dealt with this matter. We want a system that public transport that works we think we've got to get the buses and the taxis and the trains working seamlessly. And we've got to ensure that because of the old spatial divisions of apartheid, that there's some subsidy that covers some of the transport costs of workers who have placed, been placed far from their workplaces as a result of old apartheid planning. So we think that we've got to now move urgently to deal with these problems at a national level because clearly we've seen that there's been protest actions from time to time across the industry related to the regulations that are in place in the taxi industry. And, and just reflecting on what has just happened recently, you mentioned apartheid, and I'm just wondering about the history of the industry, if we're to take a geographical focus of it. Are the problems vastly different throughout the provinces or are there uh, unique features that would require uh, more of a focused provincial dialogue that goes out international? I think we've got to put in place national laws that are clearly understood and clearly applied. What's happened in the city of Cape Town, given our understanding of the issues that led to a breakdown in talks and the strike being convened is that J.P. Smith, with the support of the mayor Gordon Deals from the city of Cape Town, that they had authorized the impoundment of cars if the drivers are drunk or there are other infringements like your number plates have fallen off or other uh, petty crimes. We know that nationally there are provisions under which taxis can be impounded. We think that those provisions should apply. We think that the city of Cape Town and JP in particular has taken us to the verge of a civil war, five people dying, many, many people injured, many, many households have lost money. And uh, the city of Cape Town, who hasn't rolled out the mouse city buses to the areas that are serviced by the taxis because they've been slow on implementing it in areas other than where the well you would live, like uh, in uh, Out Bay, Sea Point, the center of city, and then in the areas towards Parklands. But the poorer areas of working class communities, they have not rolled out the My City buses. And so they should have known right at the outset that the troubles that come about from their provocation linked to the war talk with the taxi industry, that that would impact on poor communities in the main. And that insensitivity and reckless endangerment of Cape Town's citizens uh, must be held to account in respect of the mayor and J.P. Smith, because that's completely unacceptable. You've said that uh, people in the industry face exploitative uh, labor conditions and uh, violations thereof, but where is the problem? As you heard from one of the interviews that we did, the complaint were, was that not the right people are being held to account for some of the things that the taxi industry are being blamed for in terms of transgressions. So if we're going to talk about 
poverty reduction, but at the same time talk about fair labor conditions and remuneration. Where did the conversation stop, particularly in the early 2000s when there was talk of reforming and formalizing the industry? What do we need to improve on? Well, there's a number of things we need to improve in the industry. Of course, as you say, the conditions of employment of workers where they're given targets that forces them to um, exceed the speed limit so that they can both ensure that they have some income after they've met the owner, the taxi owner's targets. That has to be reviewed. We understood how the taxi industry had come about, but we'd favor a position where the operators and the drivers themselves are the owners. So you don't have a behind the scenes owners of the taxis and them just imposing conditions on the rest of the industry to either make them sufficient money. And this is not only the taxi bosses in the townships, this is also the financing agencies that have been running a bit of a mafia in the taxi related industry, which includes issues like the issuing of permits and other license provisions. So all of that has to be completely transparent. It's got to be open. It's got to be based on who operates in the industry and not a some cartels that own many, many taxis and just impose their conditions onto the industry. But we prefer where the workers themselves are owners and they are able to be part of the regulation in the industry because that's the way that we're going to ensure that commuters' concerns are taken into account because public transport ultimately is not about what the city of Cape Town or the mayor does. It's about how do we provide public transport to the people who desperately need to get to and from work from old apartheid-style planning. And right. here we live in a city that's very comfortable with apartheid-style planning and not committed to addressing the problems that do exist. Tony, very briefly, the informal nature of the industry, is this part of the reason why we're seeing the inability of the industry uh, to create conducive working conditions? We think it is. We think that government's got to take a firm stance. All businesses must pay taxes. All businesses must be registered. There's got to be compliance with the law. We completely support government in that approach, but the laws have got to be rational. They've got to speak to the issues, and they've got to ensure that they uh, ensure that public transport is more effective and doesn't effectively undermine public transport. So that's what we'd like to see going forward. But national government has to step in to make sure we have proper regulations so that the industry knows how they're supposed to operate and what are the requirements right. that public transport operators are obliged to put in place.